Super Completely and Totally the Messiest by Judith Fiorst, pictures by Robin Price Glasser. My room is very neat, like me, Olivia. Jake, my big brother, is sort of, but not a huge slob. And then there's my little sister, whose room is seriously, I mean seriously, revolting, which is one of maybe a million reasons why my sister Sophie is super, completely, and totally the messiest. Hello, is anyone home? I ask when I open the door to her room, because even when she's there, it's hard to find her. I mean, there's so much stuff on her bed that sometimes I just see the top of her head. And there's so much stuff on her floor and spilling out of her dressers that sometimes all I can find is a nose or a toe. And there's so much stuff in her closet that once when she opened up her closet, don't do it, I hollered, stop, watch out, oh no. She super completely and totally disappeared. I mean, Sophie isn't just messy. She is the messiest. Maybe you think that Sophie isn't so messy when she's in school. If you think that, you would be really wrong. Maybe you think that she isn't a mess when she puts on a fancy dress and goes to a birthday party. If you think that, you would be really wrong. Maybe you even think that she could play with crayons or paints and not mess up ceilings and cats and herself and everything. If you think that, you would be so really, really wrong that it might be a year before you were right about anything. I'm her big sister and some things I know for sure. And one thing I know for sure is that whatever Sophie does, she is the messiest. Like once when we went to the seashore where they were having a sandcastle contest and Sophie was just was carrying just her pail and her towel. And just with her pail and her towel, she super completely and totally wrecked seven sandcastles. And once we went, when we went to a circus where a juggler was juggling eggs and pitchers and flower pots, Sophie got to bring her kite along. And just by letting go of her kite, Sophie wrecked the juggler and a dozen eggs and all of the pitchers and flower pots. And once when we went to a farm to visit some chickens and cows in a vegetable garden and pigs, Sophie's shoelaces were, they're always untied. All I can say is, poor chickens, poor cows, and poor, poor vegetable garden. No, I can say something else. I can say that all of the pigs on that farm thought that my sister Sophie was their cousin. No, I'm not a rude person. I would never, ever, ever call Sophie a pig. I'm only saying that pigs think Sophie's a pig. I'm only saying this, that wherever my sister Sophie goes, she is super completely and totally the messiest. I keep on telling Sophie, try to be neat like me, Olivia. She says she'll try to be neat, but she forgets. Our mom keeps telling Sophie, try to be careful like Olivia. She says she'll try to be careful, but she forgets. Our dad keeps telling Sophie, watch where you're going and watch what you're doing. Try to pay attention like Olivia. She says she'll try to watch. She, sh she says she'll try to pay attention, but she forgets. And so when Sophie cleans up a mess, it's a messier mess than it was before she started. When Sophie clears off the plates, they'll never, ever, ever need to be cleared off again. 
And if you bought a new car and you gave Sophie a ride in that car, it would look like a really old car in about two minutes. Sophie is always making and being a mess. Like last Halloween when Sophie decided to wear a nurse's costume, white hat, white uniform, white socks, white shoes. She wanted to dress like a nurse because I told her that a nurse is never messy. What I meant, of course, was a nurse isn't messy unless she's sort of the nurse who tricks and treats all over her white uniform. Unless she's a nurse who gets candy corn stuck in her teeth. Unless she's a nurse who falls in when she bobs for apples. Unless she's a nurse who can make you super completely and totally sorry that you ever answered the doorbell on Halloween. What I mean is, Maybe you've met some messy people, but you've never met anyone messier than Sophie. Like, Sophie's got this hair, this frizzy, fuzzy, curly hair, and it sticks out around her head like a cloud or a nest. And it keeps getting bigger and higher and bigger and higher and bigger and higher because she freaks if anyone tries to cut it. Hey, Sophie, who's living in there? A couple of birds? A family of mice? That's what Jake sometimes says. He's only teasing. But once when our dad was combing her hair, he combed out a whistle, a ring, and a piece of a sandwich. And once when our mom was combing her hair, I thought I heard some chirping and some squeaks. If you're looking to see messy hair, I mean, if you're looking to see messy anything, just look at Sophie. I keep on telling Sophie, try to be more like me. Olivia. She says she'll try to be me, but she forgets. Our mom keeps telling Sophie, try to hold the plates tight like Olivia, she says. She'll try to hold tight, but she forgets. Our dad keeps telling Sophie, wipe off your mouth and your hands and your shoes. Try to be unchocolatey like Olivia. She says she'll try to wipe. She says she'll try to be unchocolatey but she forgets. And just listen to what happened when Sophie said to Jake and me, could we please help her make our mom breakfast in bed for Mother's Day? No, she didn't spill the orange juice. Jake and I helped her pour it. She didn't burn the toast. We helped watch the toast. We also helped her to not smear the strawberry jam all over the kitchen and to not put a ton of cereal in the bowl. And our dad said he would make coffee and bring it up later, so Sophie didn't get to mess that up that. Then all of us carefully carried the tray into the bedroom. Mom sat up in bed, and we set down the tray. Then Sophie felt so proud that she had made our mom breakfast in bed that she climbed on the bed and started yelling, Yay! Yay! Except that while she was yelling, Yay! Yay! She also jumped up and down, which is not a good thing to do to breakfast in bed. I mean, it was super completely and totally ugly. I mean, nobody's better at making a mess than Sophie. Our mom says I should tell you that Sophie's a kind and very nice person, even though she messes up breakfast in beds. Our dad says I should tell you that Sophie's smart. A smart and funny person, even though she wrecks sandcastles, jugglers, and vegetable gardens. Jake says I should tell you that Sophie's great at puzzles and dancing, even though she's not great at cleaning her room. Sophie sh says I should tell you that she didn't mean to drown the kitchen in water, even though she left the faucets running. And I would like to tell you that even though I would bet my best bracelet that Sophie will never be practically perfect like me, I'm hoping that one of these days she'll start to remember to stop forgetting to try not to be so super, completely, and totally the messiest.